So now I'd like to discuss chords, and we've, we've done some limited number of chord playing. By definition, a chord is any time you play three or more pitches at the same time. We can break up the chords into what we call arpeggios, but normally chords on the guitar are strummed. So the first chord that we're going to look at is called A minor, and for this we're going to use a third type of notation, which is called a chord chart. A chord chart is simply a graphic representation of the guitar's fingerboard. And uh, we basically put dots where you're supposed to press on those particular strings. So each of these vertical lines represents one of the strings. And the horizontal lines are the frets. So for A minor, you see that there's nothing indicated on the sixth string. The fifth string is to be played open. On the fourth string, you press in the second fret. On the next string, you do the same. Then on the second string, you press on the first fret, and the fifth string is open. Notice those little empty zeros there above those strings indicate that you play it open. Occasionally, you'll see chord charts that put an X on a string, and that's just to remind you, don't play that particular string in the chord. Now, this chord is also notated in standard notation at the top so that you can see that distribution of notes. We're actually playing five different notes in this, P, in this chord. A, E, A, C, E. Right? It's a stack of all of those. Now you notice that I repeated some of those notes, and those are called doublings, right? I said A, C, E, A, C, where there were more than one A in the chord. So let's look at that shape. In order to play the A minor chord, we're going to have to press on two different strings in the same fret. So we're going to have to squeeze into that fret. The first note that we play is E on the fourth string. We're going to use our middle finger for that. And right underneath it on the third string, same fret, we're going to squeeze in our third finger. Then the first finger plays the first fret of the second string. And we will strum with our thumb from the fifth up to the first string. Now you might get something like this, a note that's not ringing clearly. If that's the case, you may need to press harder. Another thing that occasionally happens is the fleshy part of one finger will touch an adjacent string and you'll get this kind of sound. And that has nothing to do with pressing with that finger on that string. It's, it's another finger on a different string that's actually touching the string as it rings. So you have to be really careful to have this perpendicular presentation, right, so that you're pressing straight down to the string. And you should be able to play all five of those strings cleanly. Now we're going to move this entire shape up one string, and in this case we get a different chord. This is a sixth string chord, it includes all six strings. This chord is called E major, or just E. When we just say the letter name, it is implied that the chord is major. Those are two basic chord qualities, minor and the other one, major. So the first chord, A minor, and if we take that entire shape and we jump up one string towards the ceiling, we have the chord E major. Or E. So what do we do with these? Well, chords are used to accompany songs, and a lot of riffs and other things are made up out of chords. They're in a very important part of guitar playing, but they're a challenging one because you have to hold multiple notes at once and then jump to another chord with multiple notes. So let's build a very basic accompaniment with this. We can take each chord and we can do a simple pattern where we play the lowest note in the chord on count one, and then on each subsequent count, we strum the remaining strings. So let's say we're in four count. That would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then we want to try to switch to E and do the same thing without losing count. One, Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 
etc. So that we move between those two chords without losing our sense of time. Now this particular change is one of the easiest ones that we have because we're moving the entire shape just up one string. So those are the first two chords. In the materials, you'll notice that there are more chords listed. Those are really something that's covered in the subsequent term because uh, it takes a little more ec ec extra practice to really get used to playing chords and moving from each of those shapes. There is a piece in the materials that's titled Etude, um, Chord Etude, or Chord Study, and um, that uses a, a, a bunch of these different shapes. Um, it's certainly a more advanced piece, so if anyone that might want to try it, just be warned that it's going to force you to know more of the shapes, um, some of the ones that we haven't covered yet. <clears throat> but it's, it's, it's a good piece nonetheless. So that does it for chords now.